Welcome to Pimpy's Investment Chat, where we keep investment talk simple. And here's your host, Pimpy. What is going on out there, peeps? So this is him. This is the CEO of FTX. I said this yesterday that this guy was a puppet on a company that's being used as a front so they can funnel money to the Democratic parties as well as organization around the world. It's just um, the laundry money. They are funneling money. And I mentioned that, and now there's all kind of articles about people questioning what's going on with FTX. The problem is the political party that's behind us is the Democrats, of course. They're really sneaky people. And they'll go out there with their media buddies and they'll go, oh, it's just a conspiracy. This isn't real. And it's unfortunately that they have the ability to mislead so many Americans. And uh, they go, it's a conspiracy. It's anything but the truth. Well, if what is being accused is not true, then why would you oppose any kind of investigation, any kind of audit at all? A lot of times our intelligence agencies are involved with these people. It really just tears the fabric of this country apart. You always hear Democrats talk about where Republicans are trying to end democracy when actually it's Democrats that are doing it. They got really good at accusing people of what they're guilty of. It's just amazing that there's so many Americans still out there that actually side with and believe the crap that the Democrats are telling people. Before we get started, though, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you're not a subscriber, please do so, because when you do, it helps out the channel, and I certainly do appreciate it. If you're thinking about buying gold and silver, go to our friends over that Money Metals Exchange. The link is down below in the description. If you are a first-time buyer and you spend more than $100, use promo code PIMPY, P-I-M-P-Y, and you will get an additional half ounce of silver. So Elon Musk posted his picture, and everybody's like, oh, you know, it's fake, it's a meme, it's Russian disinformation. It's like, Again, all these tactics, the crap that they say. Whenever the left and this World Economic Forum or George Soros gets exposed for some real questionable actions, then that's what you hear from the media. Oh, it's Russian disinformation. Oh, a political facts. Oh, this isn't even real. It, all it takes is literally like five minutes of research to find out that everything that this picture says is absolutely the truth. And this is what I said. This company is, is shady. Okay, it was a front. It was a method in which taxpayer dollars were being used to fund wars over in Ukraine and elsewhere. Cryptocurrencies are being used to funnel money. Then you have our government complaining that we need more regulations because all these Illegal activities are happening when they are the biggest corporate of a lot of these illegal activities. So yeah, Sam Bankman fried he's a CEO of FTX. He's an MIT graduate. One of his professors was Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC. This is why when I said, how come these guys haven't been looked into? Well, there's your answer. They knew each other. The guy that's in charge of babysitting the company like FTX is acquaintances with the CEO. You have Glenn Allison, who's a professor of economics at FIT, former boss of Gary Gensler. His daughter was that idiot I said was on YouTube talking about she only needed elementary math to do the finances in the company. She just sounds like an idiot. Uh, she's dating Sam Freed. So when we say, look, there's something going on here, and then you start linking it together, and they start getting exposed, immediately the media comes to their defense. When are Americans going to get tired of this crap? Whether you believe it or not, don't you want to know the truth? Even though you don't believe this story, you should be on the same page as people saying, look, we're saying it's real. You're saying it's not real. Don't you think it deserves being looked into? So yeah, there's something going on with FTX. I said there was. There's something fishy about it. And now the truth's all starting to come out. I really think this company and as well as other so-called crypto companies are being infiltrated by our intelligent agencies used by governments around the world to fund projects, to fund wars, to proxies, to uh, political campaigns, uh, to help with elections, the more we start to learn about cryptocurrencies, the more I just, we really don't want anything to do with cryptos, man, seriously. So the other day we started to see uh, cryptos going to green, then they dropped this little, and now they're going back up, which is always nice to see. Bitcoin at 16913 Ethereum's at 1256 You have XRP's at $0.38. Cents. Dogecoin's at $0.08. Cents. 
Polygon's at $0.94. Cents. Polka Dot's at $5.97. Hex is at $0.03. Cents. Solana rebounding. They're at $14.51 after everything that happened. Shiba still has that extra zero on there. It is at five zeros nine three. Cryptos have been pretty stagnant. Prices have been pretty horizontal. Not a lot of things happening. I mean, Bitcoin has lost, uh, you know, what, approximately 75% of its value from its highest peak in a short period of time. A lot of people have lost their butts off on this. And I was warning people that cryptos were in a bubble to be careful. I want to have faith in cryptos, but the more I learn about them, the more I see what they're being used for. And trust me, they're being used by our own governments as well as other governments to do nefarious things. It's really sad to see. Terra Classic's at three zeros two. It's up 6.4%. So Tom is at three zeros nine eight. Starts to climb during a certain time of the day and then drops and then starts to climb right back up. Oh, I knew when we woke up, silver would have hit $22 an ounce. And sure enough, it got above $22 an ounce. It was somewhere around $22.20. And then, of course, let the manipulation start. And now I dropped back down to $21.55. It's still seeing a very healthy, slow growth, which I'll take. I got a short period of time for it to hit between $25 and $30 by the end of the year. And I anticipate that's going to happen. So silver at $21.55 an ounce. Gold at $1,772.80. It got above the $1,780 and then came back down just a little. So there's some pullback on gold. That thing has got a long ways to go compared to where I thought it was going to be. I said gold would be somewhere between $2,500 and $3,000. And yeah, that's a big climb, but you never know. We still got some time. Let's see what happens. More likely the silver will hit my prediction and gold will just miss it. Look, Michael Saylor still clinging on to hope. <laughs> we'll prove them all wrong. Michael Saylor, Crypto.com, CEO Chris Marzalak, and Al Salvador's president and defend crypto in the wake of FTX crash. Of course, Michael Saylor is. He can't afford to lose any more money. This man has now lost a billion dollars in a quarter. It's been called the crypto's Lehman Brother moment, but the FTX crash has done little to dent the optimism of the industry's remaining big players. FTX, amongst the world's largest crypto exchanges, which, is, which was once valued at $32 billion, and who is determining the value of this company? I mean, here's what gets me. The man that's supposed to be the eyes and ears and protector for the public is actually somebody that knows the CEO of FTX. But we see all kinds of weird relationships like this with politicians. You know, they're connected to a lot of these huge companies and uh, they're always behind some kind of shenanigans. The public has gotten so used to all the crimes and corruptions from our politicians that they just don't care to complain anymore. Seriously, they just don't. Anyways, the company filed for bankruptcy last week after reports that the founder, CEO, Sam Bankman-Fried, had mishandled customer funds. Most of FTX's assets were liquidated in a space of days. The collapse has eroded trust in the industry and is a blow to investment firms, celebrity endorsements, and many of the 5 million users who stored their digital assets with FTX. Well, you know, you can't just be mad at cryptos for this. You got to be mad at the government for not doing their damn job. I brought up the fact that George Soros was using cryptos to fund a democracy movement uh, over in Miramar. And I've had more than one person going, that's a lie. No, it's not. This is Bloomberg. Look at this. Crypto Soros and the global drive to fund a revolution in Miramar. Yes. So, you know, George Soros is using cryptos to fund wars. Why are we allowing George Soros to use cryptos to fund a revolution as a citizen? Why is he allowed to do that? When anybody else that could be as rich as him took the money to try to fund a revolution, we'd be thrown in jail. All their assets stripped. So how is this guy able to get away with this when other people are not? So let that sink in. Ukraine partnered with the top damn donors, which is Sam there. Crypto company FTX's Biden administration funded a war effort. 
Ukraine partnered with FTX as Biden administration funneled funds to the invaded nation, and FTX then made massive donations to Democrats in the U.S. Is that what you want to see happening? People take our taxpayer dollars. Our taxpayer dollars are supposed to be going to Zelensky to fund a war, except for that money is being rerouted and donated back to Democrats to run campaigns. Really? They're telling us, we need to help the Ukraine people. Stay away from the bad, evil Russians. Let's send them millions of dollars. And then we send the money and then it's funneled right through a crypto company who then turn around and donates right back to the Democrats. And still, Americans are insane or doing anything about it. Multi-billion dollar crypto company FTX, run by CEO Sam Bankman fried the second biggest donor next after George Soros, of course, collapsed last week as details emerged regarding their financial practices, which led to a run by customers on FTX. FTX did not have the funds to pay out. It was also revealed that FTX had partnered with Ukraine to process donations to their war efforts within days of Joe Biden pledging billions of American taxpayer dollars to the country. Ukraine partnered with FTX as Biden administration funneled funds to the invaded nation. FTX then made massive donations to the Democrats in the United States. I showed you guys a video where this guy was promising to pledge a billion dollars in this campaign to help Democrats win. And all he's doing is taking our taxpayer dollars that the Biden administration was supposed to send to Ukraine, looping it through the cryptocurrency companies and having them donated to the politicians of their choice. And you guys are okay with that out there? So I got a lot of people who love cryptocurrencies. Don't get me wrong. I understand. I I told you guys, I admit it. I have some, I have cryptos. I do. But given everything that we've learned over the last couple of years about cryptocurrencies, the fact that they could be hacked after we were told they were really secure, the fact that if everybody did a crypto run and try to cash in at the same time, what do we see happen during crisis? They lock you out of the platform. You can't get on there to sell your cryptos. And even if you did sell all the cryptos, they don't have the money to give back to you. In addition to that, you're told that there's nothing the government could do to interfere. Then we find out that's not the case. They can close down exchanges if the exchanges don't cooperate. We know that our intelligence agencies, going way back to 2009, 2010, have been able to use blockchain follow cryptocurrencies where they are and keep track of all kinds of illegal activities and arrest people. So all the things that were alluring about cryptocurrencies are not there. They're gone. I spoke about this. The peer-to-peer anonymity, no longer. No taxes, where you get taxed. Regulations, now are being implemented. All cryptos are was their way of indoctrinating people into accepting the central bank digital currency. That's all it is. Yes, some people became millionaires off of it. Some people became billionaires off of it. But all in all, it disappears. Like, cryptos are just one huge scam. They're being used to do test runs on different types of blockchains so that they can figure out where all the kinks are. That'll help them along with their projects with uh, the central bank digital currency. Anyways, you know, it's, it's just really a shame that people have lost so much money. So much money in cryptocurrencies. Because of all these shenanigans. And now we're finding out that our own government. I don't know why I would be surprised. Uh, it has been doing some real shisty stuff. By taking taxpayer dollars. Acting like they're donating it to Ukraine. Only to funnel it through this company. And this guy turn around and donate it to Democrats. Man if people found out that Trump did that for Republicans. All how would break loose. But since it's not Trump. I guess it's okay to commit those crimes right. As long as it's uh, your team is winning. Is that what that is? Anyways, you guys, let me know what you think down below. I look forward to your comments, and I will catch you later. I'm out.